Welcome to the Discipleship Discussions podcast. We believe everyone can be a disciple who makes disciples. Our goal is to help you with this process. Each week, we take the lesson taught through basic discipleship and break it down in a discussion format. Now, let's join today's discussion. Hey, welcome back to our podcast. My name is Benji Linder. With me, as always, is Dr. Patrick Latham. Uh, today's topic is assurance. Now, we're talking about the assurance of faith. We're not saying insurance. We're saying assurance. Mm-hmm. So we would uh, assume the opposite of assurance would be to doubt. Um, so give us some reason why a person may doubt their salvation. Yeah, I've discovered, like in my own life, there's some reasons for that. I've discovered, you know, kind of being role as pastor. I know you've seen this too, doing student ministry especially, that there are some classic reasons why people doubt their salvation. And so you see, you, you're probably a subject matter expert on this because I know doing student ministry that that's the area you face a lot of doubts. So I think there's um, the idea of, of sin. Sometimes we feel... Like, um, hey, if I'm saved, I'll never blow it. I'll never mess up. I won't lose my attitude, scream, cuss, get drunk, you know, engage in some horrible sin. And so that will cause us to doubt our salvation. And really that comes down to a misunderstanding of relationship versus fellowship or communion versus union, or union versus communion. So what I mean by that is you can have a right relationship with God salvation without really having real good fellowship with him. You can have union with God, be in Christ and not have the communion with him that you ought to have. And as a result, there's sin in your life. And so then what happens when, when sin enters into your life with the Holy spirit, you get conviction, right? Um, not really guilt or shame, but conviction. And so that conviction, if you're not biblically savvy on what's going on, you can mistake it for, I need to be saved. So I've seen this before, you know, somebody as a believer falls into some type of sin. And if they're not, again, astute to what it means to be in a relationship with God, then they'll try, they feel, man, I need to be saved again. I need to be baptized. And that'll keep me from ever doing this again. Mm -hmm. I've even seen people go to the other extreme then, and maybe I should go into ministry. And it's like, whoa, hold on a second. You know, it's like that's not the way to make right this indwelling sin. Fellowship, relationship with the Lord, that type of repentance that comes after salvation in regard to daily sin is what you need. So that would be one reason. Um, anything you want to add to that? Have you it's emotions? Yeah. Uh, you you see this in the student ministry world all the time. Uh, last night at camp, um, mm-hmm. some have uh, coined that as the cry night. Yeah. Uh, last night of a retreat, and you realize that they're very, very emotional, and then by the third, fourth night, they're finally actually listening there in the sermon. Mm-hmm. And the Lord, you're right, gets a hold of them about something. And it may not just be a, a blanket sin or a cardinal sin or anything like that, as much as just gets their attention about their sinfulness. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing you know, they're, they're realizing like, hey, I've maybe separated myself from the Lord because we do that. He doesn't do that. And so yeah. we have we have not drawn near to him. And so this individual hasn't. So they're thinking, all right, I'm not a Christian anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't feel close to the Lord. And I think defining that is very, very key is what does it mean to be close to the Lord? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not butterfly, butterfly feelings and uh, w- feeling all warm and cozy inside. It's walking in obedience. And so mm-hmm. trying to take emotions out of the equation, I would say I deal with that probably the most in the student ministry mm-hmm. world. Number two would be, um, of course, false conversion, mm-hmm. uh, filling out a card, walking down the aisle just because mm-hmm. my best friend did it. So they have the situations where I want to assure some kids in this, and then there are others be like, you know what, you're doubting for a very good reason because yeah. the only reason you got saved is because you thought you were going to get the ice cream party or yeah. you saw someone else do it. And so, and I, that was almost me as a, as a young child went to church just for very brief, um, you know, time frame. 
And I saw someone get baptized, one get baptized. And, and my mother had the forethought to sit me down in front of the pastor. I'll never forget. He asked a whole bunch of questions I had no knowledge about, no answers. And he, um, he assured me that I was not uh, even close. He didn't say these words, but looking back, I think he did in preacher talk, but mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't close to understanding what the gospel mm -hmm. meant. And the Lord at that time was not calling me to salvation. I just wanted to do what everyone mm -hmm. else was doing. So I would say, I would say those two reasons for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, and thinking about a person struggling with their faith or assurance of the faith, do you find this to be a normal occurrence or an anomaly? I would think it's a normal occurrence. And I think it should be a normal occurrence. It's kind of weird. There's a healthy type of struggling with your assurance. You know, when you read some about the, the Puritans and you read some of their writings, they were real big on wrestling and fighting for assurance mm -hmm. and, um, you know, examining yourself to make sure you're in the faith. And so we've lost that kind of in the land of easy believism. It's weird. We have easy believes, believism in some ways that doesn't kind of champion that old rugged spirit of make sure you're in the faith, mm -hmm. make sure you really have fruit. So we have that easy believism and we think in some ways that it will rescue us from that kind of deeper, you know, kind of stern faith focus. But at the end of the day, maybe the easy believism has led to, um, another extreme it may be it's part of this problem where we have unhealthy assurance if that makes sense mm -hmm. like and i think you brought up a great point that part of our assurance problems with people comes from they made a false profession mm -hmm. they filled out a card they went to a camp they went to some crusade or big evangelistic event at the church the christmas musical where hey, bow your head close your eyes say this prayer and they held on to that as their salvation and they never really experienced true mm -hmm. salvation. So, yeah, I think, um, that that's a, a valid issue there that, um, I don't know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I, so I'm going to lead you into this. I'm going to kind of skip around on my I list. I forgot what your original question was. <laughs> I do, if I didn't have it written down, I'm talking about you know, it being uh, either an anomaly to doubt your faith. Yeah, or, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, great point. Let me, go, let me circle back on yeah. that. I totally got off track there. So, um, yeah, so my point there was we see it. Um, we do see that issue, mm -hmm. but um, we see it. But I think we see it in an unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. We should see it in a healthy way that people do what Scripture says. They examine themselves to see whether or not they're in the faith. But I think, unfortunately, we're seeing it in an unhealthy way where people just aren't rock solid in the gospel. We haven't had enough good gospel preaching many times. We've had a lot of halfway gospel presentations where, you know, it's just believe instead of repent or it's, you know, sign up to follow Jesus or Jesus wants to be your friend, check yes or no, you know, instead of like real gospel preaching and real gospel invitations. So you have people who are unsure because they haven't had rock solid gospel teaching. Yeah. And so I'm going to piggyback off of that. What I see an issue, and I wrote this in, um, one of the maybe, I don't know, lack of a better term, uh, uh, antidote perhaps for this, maybe the because of lack of discipleship. Because uh, mm -hmm. when I think about, and I have just this, this photographical memory of kids sitting in front of me, and I look back and I go, okay, kid doubt it, kid doubt it, kid, kid doubt it. Very limited amount of discipleship mm -hmm. from from home, and, and, and maybe the only discipleship they got is while they were here, or while they only went to events or camps. And so talk about the issue of discipleship, or maybe rather how the issue can maybe be resolved by discipleship yeah I, I mean that's that's so critical because i you know i became a believer and then wasn't discipled so i was really weak doubted my salvation and it wasn't until you know getting grounded through discipleship even in the lesson i shared a story about a guy who first discipled me mm -hmm. who really helped me land down land on the assurance of my salvation so yeah huge deal there because really assurance comes down to a lack of gospel understanding mm -hmm. um Assurance comes down to being equipped with biblical truth to confront indwelling sin, to know what the gospel is, to know how to approach your feelings, 
um, to know how to examine your life for fruit. And all that requires training in the Scripture. That's what discipleship is, Mm -hmm. teaching them to observe or obey all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's so critical to have um, discipleship. And, And here's the other component with discipleship. Here's what makes discipleship different than preaching. Can you disciple people through preaching? Yeah, because there's training. Mm -hmm. But can you fully disciple? No, because there's not that one-on-one kind of life, iron sharpening iron, as Proverbs says. So that's where discipleship is so critical. Not only is someone getting the truth they need, but they're able to say, hey, here's what's going on in my life. Here's what I'm struggling with. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Not only that, they have a person. Discipleship's about followership. You're doing life together. So they have a person who's seen how they live, have heard them pray, have seen their testimony, have seen fruit in their life. So that in that type of discipleship relationship, the discipler is able to speak into it like, dude, I know you. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen fruit in your life. And I think what you're struggling with is X, Y, Z. So that's where discipleship is so critical because mm-hmm. you're getting that training but then you've also got a relationship where you can bounce ideas off of someone and, and say, what do you think? You see my life. You right. know? And I'll even say the deeper you go in theology at times, like my story of doubting my salvation happened first semester of seminary going through um, th- uh, no theology. Or, uh, no, we did, Wayne we did uh, or something. Conyers, Co- okay. Coyers, Conyers. It, it was a white uh, book with some colors on the t- uh, front. Uh, but so I it, have Was Erickson. it Mormon basic theology? No, no, no. Was that no, why no, you were doubting no. your salvation? No, no. So uh, <laughs> I just remember just learning about this. And number one, I felt like I was so ignorant. Uh-huh. Like I was like, I don't know. Do I know enough to really yeah. be a Christian? And so I wrestled with that and I journaled about it. And at the end of the day, I realized what I was wrestling with were the deep things of God and I ought to wrestle with that and I ought to take that and examine my life. I think there's something healthy about examining your life based off the depths of God. So That has helped me. Uh, It was a chaotic time for sure for Mm -hmm. a whole semester, but uh, sometimes we see the doubting of the salvation because of sin or emotions, but sometimes it's the deeper you pursue theology, Mm -hmm. the uh, study of God, that, that happens as well. Um, so final question is if you're counseling somebody, they're sitting across from the table or across the table from you right now, um, and they are struggling with it. What are the top three things you would tell them? You know, I would, I, you know, just try to ask questions to discern why, like, why would you think you're not saved? I would, um, so normally many times that will unearth right away the sin issue, you know, well, uh, I had an older man, a deacon, um, a few years ago, um, talked to me, you know, there was some major division in his family between um, one of his children who was getting a divorce, and this man um, ended up getting really upset and got in an altercation with the other family, you know, and so that made him feel like he wasn't saved. Do I not have the spirit? And the people actually, oh, I thought you were a Christian mm-hmm. when he mm-hmm. um, lost it. So, you know, a lot of times just, asking the question will unearth something like that or um you know sometimes you'll find out it's a health problem Mm -hmm. that they feel so alone and forsaken by god so um you know i'd probe in those areas to find out what's going on like why what's happening what are you thinking what's been going on um so so look for that and then uh, secondly, really try to well ask them. You know, and I, I'm asking a lot of questions here. Try not to be Job's friends and tell. Right. Ask so, um, you know. Well, tell me what what would make you saved. Mm-hmm. You know, um, what is good enough, or what will work for you to be saved, um, and and let them have the opportunity to recite the gospel, and then be like, well, there you go. That's, right. That's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, here's your sign. That's what you're looking for, right? That's what the Bible says. Then take scripture to say, well, based on what you said, you've got it, you know. Um, so those would be some of the things I look at. And that, you know, a big thing I always do um, is go to First John five thirteen, and many of those conversations is to make sure I knuckle down on the Bible says these things have been written unto you so that you can know that you have eternal life. Mm-hmm. See, I mentioned the Puritans earlier. Maybe if they're a fault at one in one way, it seems like in some of the writings you seem they almost champion this idea of always being austere and in doubt concerning your salvation. 
like that was a, a holier approach that you were so meek and broken over sin that you didn't know whether or not you were really saved. Um, I would challenge that line of thinking with, I really believe the Lord wants you to stand with joy and victory and knowing you're saved. So you need to, you need to face this head on. You need to get down to brass tacks. You need to wrestle with it. But the Lord wants you to get to the place where you know that you are saved and that you are a child of God. I think you can't get away from that in Scripture, that the Lord wants us to have that assurance. And you're not going to move on to really grow as a Christian. You're not going to move on to be effective in discipleship. You're not going to be move on and be an effective witness or servant in the church until you have that assurance. So a level of confidence, yeah, uh, because you can't f- follow a mission or carry out a mission if you're not confident. Of yeah, that. yeah. And, so, and the, the uh, confidence, the key, key thing there is the confidence is in Christ, That's right. not yourself. Because mm-hmm. some think it's like um, a, a holy, self-effacing, you know, righteous thing to always be in doubt. Like I'm just not sure. It's like no, you know. At the end of the day, if you keep doing that, it's really. Though it may look like you're not sure of yourself, it's really that you're not sure in Christ, mm-hmm. you know. And that's where you got to get to is that you're sure in Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So it may look like boastful and presumptuous to say, I'm confident as much as I'm standing here that I'm saved. Mm-hmm. But I think it's really healthy to get to that place mm-hmm. so long as the confidence is in Christ and the cross and not yourself. Absolutely. And we're going to end on that note because there's no other or no better note to end on. Uh, Thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast today. We look forward to seeing you at our next session. Thank you for joining us today for our discussion on basic Christian life. Stay current with other episodes by subscribing to our podcast. For show notes, visit us online at basicdiscipleship.net. If you have any questions about the materials presented in this discussion, or if you would like to give feedback, email us at info at basicdiscipleship.net. Thanks for listening.